What is up YouTube? This is Alex AK Foreign. So the beginning of summer 2016 has been full of very interesting gaming hardware announcements and quick releases. The new Pascal cards from Nvidia were announced and released within a matter of weeks and now AMD announced the RX 480, their new Polaris GPU with more announcements coming very soon. I have a few things to say on this topic. Both Nvidia and AMD are businesses, which means they are doing what they're doing for some kind of profit. And they had tons of marketing fluff in all their announcements. When announcing the 1080, they had this slide. And the 1080 dot is much higher than the other dots as you can see, but on the Y axis it says relative VR performance. And the people of course saw the high dot here, but not what was written on the Y axis. The increases in performance are mostly due to the very interesting software solutions NVIDIA came up with. For instance, simultaneous multi-projection and single-pass stereo, which tremendously help VR performance and seem very cool indeed. In non-VR games, the 1080 is faster than a stock 980 Ti and even Titan X, yes, but nowhere near as NVIDIA advertised. Good aftermarket 1080s will also cost somewhere between $600 and $700 or even higher, just as the 980 Ti's usually cost during the past year. That means that the 1080 Ti, when it eventually comes out, will be far more expensive than the 980 Ti at launch, which is kind of sad. But despite all of Nvidia's pricing choices, including the terrible idea of the founder's AK reference card and other marketing choices, the 1080 is still a monstrously powerful card, beating every single consumer card on the market right now. Now, concerning AMD's recent announcement, they announced their mid-range card, so to say. There will be two versions, the 4 and the 8 gig models, which will most likely cost 199 and 229 to 250 USD respectively. Now, it is important to note that these are the reference cards, so the aftermarket ones will be priced somewhere around the 250 to 270 dollar mark, depending on the amount of VRAM. The RX 480 is supposed to be able to play VR games, and that is AMD's main point, to expand the VR ready audience and allow higher resolution gaming or higher frequency gaming at a cheaper price. Price to performance basically, which was in fact ATI's main strategy back when they were a thing. The performance of the RX 480 is bound to be somewhere between the GTX 970 and Fury levels, depending on the game. Another interesting thing about the card is its power consumption. Now AMD made a big mistake and I still don't understand why by showing the total power consumption in the Computex presentation. The truth is that due to the RX 480 having only one 6 pin power connector, the card is not able to draw more than 75 watts from the PSU. The 150 watts here comes from the power it is able to take from the PSU and the motherboard. The 1070 and their power consumptions are compared because of this has one 8-pin connector which allows it to draw up to 150 watts from the PSU plus 75 watts from the motherboard. So it's in a whole different class of GPUs and comparing the two is just silly. Now what's important as well is that AMD is not competing with Nvidia at the moment. They are taking the mid-range part of the market whereas Nvidia are aiming for the more enthusiast side. Due to AMD losing share in the past years, they have come to a conclusion that the aggressive pricing and change of release schedule should be beneficial and allow them to finally recover and give Nvidia some proper competition. What I'm planning to do on this channel in the coming months is to give overviews about the aftermarket coolers on the 1080, 1070, 480 and other cards as soon as they come out and have enough variety in their board partners lineups. I can't afford any of the Nvidia cards unfortunately, but I will most probably buy a 480 if its performance and benchmarks are real. We as consumers should hope that AMD actually releases a worthwhile product to be able to keep Nvidia in check. Because looking at the CPU market and how Intel is treating its development, we can make certain conclusions on what will be waiting for us should AMD fail. Competition is beneficial for driving industries forward. If you have any questions or suggestions, ask them in the comment section below. I thank you for your attention and hope to see you later.